One of the more interesting developments in world politics in my lifetime has been the sort of, I don't know, rebound or rehabilitation or whatever you want to call it, uh, the re-emergence of the UK and France as powers of, I guess one would almost say, the first rank. Um, I remember as a younger fellow in the 1970s, it was just assumed that Britain in particular was pretty much cooked. It wasn't going anywhere. It was just going to slide into obscurity, and that was apparently okay with the British. Uh, <laughs> Britain matters again in a big way in this world. What the British government decides to do has real repercussions, and the same thing with France. Now, this is, yes, this is going to be another video where I slavishly uh, tell everybody how, how fabulous I think the French are, but uh, France is back just as forcefully as Britain is, perhaps more so. Uh, France doesn't have any big advantages uh, economically or anything like that, or uh, it, its population base is you know, kind of small for, say, comparing it to Germany or the United States or China or something like that. It doesn't have the advantages that one would assume that a country of its rank would have, but what France is extremely good at is playing the hand that it's dealt. Um, they got a space program, high-tech, very wired country, uh, very, this isn't necessarily a nice thing, but sophisticated and highly developed armaments industry, and the armaments industry is one of those industries that's sort of a benchmark, that sort of says uh, how important you are in the world. And diplomacy, diplomatic skills that are second to none. Um, we should have seen this coming, I suppose, uh, right after the Second World War, when France, which was one of the defeated countries, ended up finishing the war as one of the victors and one of the people who were able to dictate, not just suggest, but dictate the form of the peace that was going to come after the Second World War. The French are very good at that kind of thing. The French are very good at playing the game of life. <clears throat> I think that's one of the things that sets them apart from a lot of, I don't know, other sort of more or less self-absorbed countries like, say, Italy or, um, you know, Spain or something like that, or even the UK. The UK can be quite self-absorbed as well, but the French tend to look out at the world. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why France will always be sort of a linchpin of any idea of Europe. Uh, so they're very good at playing the game. They're very good at getting dealt a mediocre hand, I suppose, and winning a game against people with a much better hand than they have. Um, but they don't seem to seek meaning in any of that, the way that we do in the Anglosphere, where the meaning is the journey in and of itself. The meaning is the destination. No, playing the game proficiently um, isn't necessarily what gives the French person meaning in his or her life. The other side of the coin is, where most European countries think that, say, Britain, United States, Canada, Australia, whatever, we're over-specialized and that all that we do know how to do is to do things. We're very good at doing things, but we don't really have much to offer the world in terms of culture and being fully human. The French have this, again, in spades, which is, I think, what makes France so, I don't know, appealing to so many other Europeans. Not only are the French very successful at playing the game, at staying an important power of the first rank, um, they are very good as individuals in the other aspect of life, uh, which is being. They're very good at doing, but they're also very good at being. Um, let's say that we've got a French businessman who's, run a, who's running, helping run one of Europe's most um, successful and powerful companies. There's a lot of them in, that are based in France, by the way. Um, and he's just uh, scored some deal that has made his company even stronger or more powerful or whatever, pushed it ahead in the world. Maybe he's even licked the American competition or something like that. <clears throat> Does he get any meaning out of that? We might get some satisfaction out of nailing the enemy or whatever, or if he gets a raise, so much the better. But 
<clears throat> what does he... Where does his, his meaning come from? That's the cafe, or the card table, or whatever, where he sits around and discusses things with people. Now, this isn't unique to the French, and plenty of English people do this as well, and I'm just talking about a continuum here. Continental Europeans in general are able to, what we would say, be far more than uh, us English speakers can be. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Say if you go to Italy, an Italian can make a cup of coffee last three hours, um, and just the sheer joy of the conversation is all that keeps him at that table. There's no deal being struck. There's no <clears throat> goal being met. His goal isn't to purchase the coffee, consume the coffee, carry on a conversation, and then leave. Uh, at, as long as he's sitting there underneath that parasol in the noisy thoroughfare or public square or whatever with people coming and going, as long as he's sitting there talking to one or several people about one would even say completely useless and non-goal oriented subjects. That's when his real life is. Um, <clears throat> you notice this even among English and French Canadians. English Canadian will sit down to his meal in a restaurant, consume the meal, and then leave. The point is to get the food into his belly. To a French person, you sit there and you experience that meal. Uh, I understand this is a simplistic way of discussing this. Yeah, the sun's blasting again. Uh, but on a general continuum, <clears throat> that is the classic illustration of doing versus being. Um, if you can just be and stop doing, and you can switch back and forth, I think you will have uh, figured out how you can go beyond the idea of life as simply a game. Uh, with points and a goal and um, you know opponents that you're playing against, you can succeed at that game while getting your meaning elsewhere, or perhaps not getting your meaning elsewhere, perhaps just getting your your meaning elsewise. Um, you can sort of think, and the French are utterly cynical people. Uh, that, yeah, it's kind of stupid, me working for, you know, this big car company uh, making cars. The, we're just playing an, an economic game which is going nowhere, and it's not really ever going to end. It just keeps going on forever, and, yeah, this is kind of just a waste of time. Oh, I'm starting to think that way. Okay, it's time for me to go out, uh, have a half liter of wine in a long conversation and work this out in my head. Um... The French seem to have both sides of the human personality covered. Our desire to play a game with goals, with um, with uh, ideas in mind as to where we want to go with it, and they also seem to have the capacity to be. Now, the English would say that they have the capacity to shut off, but I would say that's not necessarily true. They have the capacity to switch gears uh, in mental or emotional or intellectual modes, um, which we don't seem to have, at least to the extent that the French do, or that, say, the Italians do, or the Spanish, or whoever. <clears throat> Being is not a state or not a aspect of the human totality that is emphasized in the English-speaking world. Um, but it is probably the best um, example of a culture that is a little bit too much wrapped up in the doing bit, in playing that game. Uh, and, not only that, being somewhat frightened by the realization that's always in the back of the mind here, that this game ain't going anywhere. Um, you over-specialize. You say that doing is what matters. And okay, um, but part of you, half of you perhaps, wants to be. Um, and 
that to me is the antithesis of life as nothing more than a game um, or existence or reality as nothing more than a game uh, I won't say that it's not a game but it is infinitely more than just a game sit still and think about something some state you want to be in. There's plenty of that in life, too.